Good morning, I'm Johnine Parker and I'd like to welcome you to Jefferson County Hospitals Foundation's Health Fair. Welcome to Jefferson County Hospital right here in Fairfield. Today we have many things going on to help you learn about how to stay healthy and how to take care of a number of problems as well as many, many things to keep you safe. Here in our front parking lot, we'll be, we'll be having a demonstration by the Libertyville Jaws of Life. We have the Lions Club with their glaucoma mobile. This mobile is very hard to get and travels the state. It offers free testing for eye pressures. It's an opportunity for people to learn about that problem and a wonderful way to help people avoid blindness. We also have a group of high school students here with the .08 Fatal Vision Goggles. The goggles help simulate alcohol levels in the blood. The students are offering opportunities to walk a straight line and to attempt to shoot basketball hoops with these goggles on. As we move on inside today, you're going to find three floors of activities, all sorts of activities from taste opportunities to some of the things I mentioned earlier. You'll be able to go to our laboratory and for an extremely reduced fee, have a number of blood tests this day. Also something new that we've added this year is blood typing. So many people are interested in their blood types and we're offering it to people who are 12 years of age or, or older. As we travel down that area of the hospital, you will ha you have an opportunity to see an actual meth lab. Jerry Droz from our Sheriff's Department is here today showing an actual lab that was found in a bag by a child in our community. It's very important to us here at the hospital that you know what to look for, as well as what not to touch if you're confronted with this type of a thing. We also have a large demonstration on child safety seats and how to make sure that your children are kept very safe in our vehicles. We know that accidents account for the major cause of child deaths. Moving along down that hall, we have a major display with the Jefferson County Hospital operating room. Did you ever wonder what an implanted joint looks like when a person gets a new knee or a new hip? We have some of those joints here today for you to look at, to ask questions about, and to touch. Another thing that we're showing is a surgical eye microscope. It's set up so that you can look into it and actually look into an artificial eyeball to see how it looks when eye surgeries are done. We have Jeff Bittner and his wife Wendy from Otumwa here with their Med Laser products. Did you have an interest in having any type of laser procedure for cosmetic purposes? They're here to explain that today. Children are going to be able to get a new cast for their finger that can easily slip on and off but help children learn about what it's like to have a cast. Our respiratory therapy department has some actual lungs available for people to touch and see how lungs work and you have an opportunity to have your blood oxygen levels measured for free there too. Unicity is with us today showing a number of herbal products. Our hospital foundation is available with surgical scrubs for people to purchase if they want, balloons for the children, information about fundraising as well as a demonstration on the automatic external defibrillators that you're hearing so very much about in our community these days. Our local people who provide all sorts of services for us on a volunteer basis are heavily represented. Our Trails Council will be able to show you today exactly where the trails are located and how you can access them and the progress they're having in the development of the trail system in and around our city. We have a number of services represented for ch other child safety. The Children's Alliance is here with Happy Bear so that you can learn how to keep your children safe. Sun safe. We're heading into summer. How do you keep our children and all of us safe from the harmful rays of the sun? We have a booth here today that will help show you about that and tell you as well as some free sun sensitive beads for children so that they can learn when too much is too much. We employ emergency room physicians at Jefferson County Hospital. We have representation from their company today as part of their booth there will be an opportunity for any one of the people attending to actually place defibrillator paddles on a mannequin's chest to see how those are used in case of a heart rhythm disturbance, as well as learning how we protect airways. 
Traveling on down the halls of our first floor, people will be able to learn about magnetic foot products, about the Cancer Society and all of the many things that they do for us. SHIP. SHIP is a project to help elders learn about the variety of insurance procedures and products that are available for their purchase or for their care so that they have a better understanding. We have people here today who can tell about uh, Caring Friends, a group for people who have lost someone special in their lives. And we'd like everyone to learn a little bit more about the movement we have at Jefferson County Hospital called our Championship Culture. This is a project that we have going to help make this a very best hospital anywhere around so that we can offer to each and every one of you the absolute best care possible, no matter if you're the patient or if you're the family. Our lower level is packed with lots of other opportunities too. Econo Foods is here with a big display of all sorts of healthy fruits and vegetables. It's an opportunity to sample what's available in our town this time of year and learn about them. Dietarily, all kinds of information available for people. Did you want to know or have information about a particular diet or a particular food supplement? The ARC is here to help people learn about what's available for our special needs citizens. hy V is with us today also with many food samples and introducing their whole new organic line. The Amazon Herb Company is going to allow people to have all sorts of opportunities to taste their herbal teas and learn about many of the herbs available. We have a number of other representation from law enforcement today as well. Our highway patrol is here with all sorts of information that will be of great benefit. Face painting is available for everybody. The local 4-H groups are helping us with that. Massage, yoga, just to name a few. The Iowa Donor Network. Have you ever considered donating any organs if you no longer need them? It's an opportunity to give the precious gift of life or sight to another person. Lifeline. Lifeline is a very important project in our hospital and in our community. You have an opportunity today to learn all about that as well as all of our home care services available. Traveling on to the third floor, you can have your blood sugar tested for free, learn about your blood pressure. Do you have a living will? Have you ever wanted to? There's an opportunity to learn how to implement that here at the hospital today. Try those nutritional supplements. When someone you know or you need extra supplementation, it's so hard to look at a shelf in a grocery store and know if it's something you'll like. Today we offer an opportunity to try any number of things to see if it's something that you would enjoy trying. Speech therapy, Weight Watchers, Curves, how do I get healthy? How do I get that figure I've wanted and how do I take good care of my heart and other body systems? Excellent representation from all these groups including our own Park and Recreation Department. Jefferson County Hospital's Physical Therapy Department is offering a wide variety of opportunities today. Body fat with uh, your composition will be measured. Grip testing is going to be done to see how your grips are. A number of other opportunities to assess and evaluate body mobility and motion are available. Are you having problems with your feet? Richard Rose is with us today offering an opportunity to have your feet uh, checked out to see if anything can be done for them. How's your hearing? Would you like a free hearing test? Today at the hospital hearing tests are being done for free to help evaluate if you need some extra help in the hearing line. Occupational therapy and speech therapy are both on hand today to help you learn about those functions and also see if any of them can be integrated for you or someone you know and care for. Our own police reserves are available to help you do child identification. It's so important to have some type of identification for every child in our community. Heaven forbid that the unmentionable occur, but if something should happen to a child, Having identification immediately available is of the utmost. Have you ever tried Wheel of Health? We don't have Pat and Vanna with us, but we have lookalikes. Come answer health 
questions, whether you're a child or an adult, today at the hospital and receive a prize for participating. So much going on, it's hard for me to remember everything. If you like Blue Bunny products, we have Health Smart Bars today, all kinds of them free so that you can learn about healthy alternatives. Today we have a group of high school students from Fairfield High School. Their intent is to help other people learn about how our senses are impaired with alcohol on board in our systems. They have with them fatal vision goggles which simulate vision at .08 alcohol level. Holly Hill is our coordinator today. Holly, would you like to tell us a little bit about your interest? Sure. Hi, I'm Holly Hill. I'm a senior at Fairfield High School and I'm involved in many activities, dance and drill, cheerleading, and student council, and National Honor Society. And today we're just giving people a chance to try on the goggles and it makes them feel like they're intoxicated and giving them um, things to do like walk a straight line and shoot baskets. So it's a lot of fun. We have Matt Hunt here with us today. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Uh, we're just trying to raise the awareness on how alcohol affects uh, how you move and your motor skills. Okay. Rose Danaher. <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty much doing just what he said. We have kids and adults come up and try on the goggles and try to shoot hoops. And Jennifer Osby. <laughs> well, it's just pretty much like they said, just awareing people on how much alcohol does really affect you and how much it affects your senses and things. And then finally, Ashley McCoy. We're just trying to raise awareness um, about how alcohol affects the senses by using the drunk goggles and having people shoot hoops. Thank you very much. Thanks to each of you for being here today. That's it. Today we're very, very pleased to be ha able to have our local Lions Club and their statewide known Lions Glaucoma Mobile. With me is Ed Felger to start. Ed, can you tell us a little bit about the function of the Lions Club in town and your work with the Glaucoma Mobile? The Lions Club basically is sight and hearing. We promote sight and we promote hearing. The Glaucoma Mobile here is sponsored by the Iowa Lions Foundation, which I am a trustee for the Iowa Lions Foundation for three years. We go from town to town, the local Lions clubs sign up to have the Glaucoma Mobile came through, and it tests for glaucoma and it tests for diabetes. Uh, and it comes through about, this is all free too, by the way, it doesn't cost anyone anything to have the test. And it comes through on the average about once every three years to Fairfield. And we're really, really happy because this year not only do we get it today, but I think you get it again this fall. Right. We are uh, in line to get it this fall. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that we can do that again at our next health fair in two years. With us also is Lane Bush. Lane, would you like to tell us a little bit about your role? I'm just one of the worker bees, uh, along with Chad and <laughs> Bill Hellcamp and Arden Messer here this morning, and a few other lions are showing up. And uh, I have been through it. I, I went through it early this morning. It's uh, it's uh, simple and quick. Uh, we have a Dr. Bloom, who is the uh, ophthalmologist, and um, it, as Ed said, they do uh, blood pressure, um, diabetes testing and a vision, a simple vision test, and then the um, glaucoma testing. Now can you tell us, is this uncomfortable to have done? A lot of people are concerned about that. No, uh, small prick in the finger that you hardly notice, and uh, for the little blood uh, test for diabetes, and that's it. Everything else is very simple. They do put in uh, some eye drops for dilation, but uh, I would not be afraid to drive the car 10 minutes later. It's, okay. it's fine. And Chad Huff, I understand that you're also collecting eyeglasses. Can you tell us about that? Oh, yeah. Um, we've got different locations um, where you can drop off eyeglasses. I think at High V, Walmart, uh, Senior, Center. Senior Center. I think there's one in most Econ all the churches, too. I Econo think. Foods. Yes, there's one. Econo Foods. And most of the churches, you can drop eyeglasses off. And how also. are these eyeglasses used? Um, basically, we take them uh, to the convention every year, and Ed actually knows a lot more about this oh, than I do, but he's, he's the guy. 
We'll let okay. him tell you. <laughs> we collect the eyeglasses. Uh, all towns that has Lions Club collect eyeglasses. We take them into Ames, to the Iowa Lions uh, State Office. There they're sorted. There they're graded. Then they're taken to the poor countries down in Central America and, and down in South America and Africa and stuff. The real poor people that doesn't have access to glasses and stuff, then their eyes are tested and they're given these glasses free of charge. And it's a real good way if you've got old glasses laying around, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, you've outgrown the prescription for. Uh, take them into these collection places or call any Lions member and they'd be glad to pick them up and take them in. And, then people, they can use these glasses and we get a lot of use out of them. It's a, it's a very good uh, idea to come up with. We also collect hearing aids. We also collect hearing aids too. And they'll go through, redo them, and uh, give them to the people that can't afford them and that need them. So that's a good thing too. I didn't know that personally even. I'm really glad to hear that. And as you can see, the local Lions Club works in all levels of hearing, in he uh, hearing and sight, conservation, and in helping those who are less fortunate than we are. We're very blessed to have both the club and their special glaucoma mobile with us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One more thing I'd like to mention, we was talking about used eyeglasses. Last year at the district convention here in Fairfield, I was district governor of the Lions for this area. So we had our district convention in Fairfield. I said I'd like to fill my pickup completely full of used eyeglasses, and we got my pickup completely full of used eyeglasses, and then I hauled them to Ames. So we do collect a large amount of eyeglasses and pass them on. I'd like to uh, call your attention right now. We got a Mr. Lion here with us right now. Uh, can you growl for us or anything? <coughs> oh boy, he can growl early this morning, can't he? Is there anything that you'd like to? Uh, put into the microphone or anything you'd like to have me say about you? I don't think so. Oh, he doesn't think so. That's pretty good talk for a, <laughs> for a lion. Uh, That's up to you. Well, this is Ray Dake here. He's a, he's a treasure of our Lions Club. Our Lions Club just purchased this new Lions uniform. Very nice looking Lions uniform. This is the first time we've had it in operation, so we're glad to show it off. Thank you, Ray. We appreciate it. Part of our health fair today is a booth presented by Wendy and Jeff Bittner. They're offering a wonderful new possibility for people with their med laser cosmetic options right here in our local community as close as Ottumwa. I'm going to turn it over to them to tell you a little bit about the services they offer. Thank you. We're very happy to be here today in Jefferson County. And what we're offering right now is Med Laser Cosmetics laser technology to treat unwanted hair and unwanted spider veins. We also do uh, facial rejuvenation through microdermabrasion and laser treatments. And the, some of the rejuvenation can also treat scars, stretch marks, and acne as well. Right now we have a clinic located in Ottumwa in Southeast Iowa. We, we hope very soon to be able to offer this service services right here in Fairfield as well. Um, don't know what else to say. Are you finding that this service has been well used already? It is. We're seeing a wonderful patient response already. We've been open um, for, I guess it's about three months now, and we're, we're filling up quickly and booking far in advance, and I encourage people to give us a call and schedule a consultation for more information. I know we get lots of questions here from people about where these types of services can be obtained. How would they go about doing that? Just call you? Yes, they can. Um, they can call us at our clinic location in, in Ottumwa. They can also call Medical Arts Clinic and get information from them as well. Um, it is very exciting that women can just call so close to home and get this services, these services now because until just recently you would have to go to say Des Moines or Iowa City in order to find these types of services. That's right and that's very hard for many people. A lot of people aren't comfortable having to travel so far away from home in order to get the services so we're awfully glad to have them close to home. Thank you very much and thanks for being with us Thank today. Thank you. Bye -bye, Another thing that we have at our health fair today is a booth presented by Louise and Kevin Tui on their Unicity products. Kevin, would you like to tell us a little bit about the products and services that you have? Sure, thank you. Um, 
Our company is a is the. Um, can we stop? Or are we live? No, we're not live. Oh. But he'll edit it out. Okay, okay. So our company is the direct sales division for Rel Numico, which is the world's leading company in preventive healthcare with about $5 billion in annual sales, uh, 28,000 employees uh, operating in 106 countries worldwide. And um, in the division that we operate in, we have products that are all natural, and yet uh, many of which are in the PDR, Physician Desk Reference, which is, I know you know, yes. uh, is the Bible, if you will, for the yes. medical um, uh, folks. And uh, these are products that address things like high cholesterol, um, as well as other issues from uh, heart disease, um, insomnia, uh, concerns relative to um, uh, eyesight, etc. So a lot of natural products that people have a, a concern about, and certainly the great work that uh, you do here at the hospital is, is key, but also people are often looking for ways that, uh, from a natural point of view, might address some of the issues that they have. And uh, I've, I've actually heard it said that um, as, we, as we age, uh, you're either going to have um, wellness medicine to be used or, or illness medicine, and wouldn't it be better right. to stay healthy and uh, keep your body in, in healthy shape with wellness medicine? Absolutely. That's why we're all here, to help people live very long, very healthy, and happy lives. Louise, could you join us here? Could you tell us a little Hi. bit about the, about your function in dealing with these products? Oh, certainly. Um, I'm uh, working the business full time. Uh, I'm at home. It's a, a business that uh, I can uh, work out of my home on school hours, and um, it's uh, something that's dear to my heart because the uh, uh, the products are natural. And uh, I've always uh, had a bent towards that. I was a massage therapist for 20 years. And um, many people have talked to me about their health concerns. And, uh, you know, people are always looking for something uh, in the preventive health uh, arena. And these products really address those concerns. And that is an exciting part about healthcare today that people are looking more right. towards preventive education and intervention rather than dealing with a disease process that's already full-blown and out of control. So we're very excited about having these options, having many options in healthcare today, and this is one of them. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Welcome, Janine. You know, sometimes when children are injured and maybe have a broken bone, having to have a cast is a very scary thing. So our emergency department, led by Curtis Smith, is offering a easy to slip on and off cast for a child's finger so that they can learn how a cast feels but without having to have all the fear involved with an actual injury. Curtis, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with this young lady? A simple little cast on her, um, just so if she would ever have an injury where she needed one, to realize it's not that big of a deal. It's not that scary, and they don't hurt, and they don't hurt coming off. The neat thing about this one is when you take it off when it dries later, you can just slide it off. A real cast you can't though, okay? Can you tell us your name? Alex. Alex, Alex, we're really glad to see you at the health fair. Are you having fun? Yeah. It looks to me like someone's painted a paw on your cheek. <laughs> you look very pretty with that. How does that cast feel on your finger? Wet. Does it feel wet? Is it warm? When a person gets a cast, it feels warm for a little while. It's fun to learn about, isn't it? Thank you for coming to our health fair, and thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Johnny. Is that film me? Uh, just a little bit, and then when it gets People ones, okay? Here's a baby pig. He was born this week. He was, he was born dead, so I... Okay, and this is an adult pig, and you can see how nice and pink they are. This white stuff up here is the voice box, where it makes sounds, where you talk. You see this right here? This is your breathing tube. Okay, your windpipe. And then this white floppy thing is your eating tube. It's called your esophagus, where your food goes down. You want to touch him? I have wipes. He's not slimy, I promise. No? So if you never smoke, you'll have nice pink lungs like this. Okay? And these are probably the size of daddy's lungs. Okay? You want some bookmarks? We have some bookmarks over there. Beth Morrow is the respiratory therapist for Jefferson County Hospital. She's demonstrating and showing to people how healthy lungs look and telling them a little bit about what happens with smoking and adding other harmful 
uh, chemicals to the lung or breathing system. Beth, can you tell us a little bit about this? Um, we just saw the healthy pig lung here. They're nice and pink. This represents um, the death of a lung. This middle uh, example here is from an emphysema lung. You can see that every time you smoke a cigarette or cigar or whatever, the tar will stay in your lungs forever. Um, and this, this shows this. This is from an actual lung on an autopsy. This was actually a gentleman's lung. You can see where you start getting these holes. Um, this is the, gen the same gentleman's lung a piece of it and it shows the cancerous tumor right here. So eventually this um, what is what happens with, with smoking and other harmful things that you breathe in. Thank you very much. You're Thanks welcome. for helping to educate mm -hmm. people about how to stay healthy. You're welcome. Children stay safe is very important as I said earlier. Accidents um, claim the lives of way too many children every year. We have Kathy Guyberson here today to help people learn about buckling up and staying safe. Kathy, would you like to tell us about your promotion? Our promotion is we're trying to emphasize people putting their children in car seats because 9 out of 10 car seats are installed incorrectly. So we're trying to get that emphasis out there to get people put their kids in the seats and have them checked on a regular basis. And by doing that, April or May 18th, we will be having a car seat checkup event out here at Jefferson County Hospital across by the helipad. And I encourage anyone to come out and to get their seats checked because like I said, nine out of 10 are installed incorrectly. And we want Jefferson County to be installed perfect if we could. That's what we want too. We want to take care of our children. And you have a special person with you today. It looks like we have Buckle Bear here. Buckle Bear, do you have anything to say about buckling up? Always wear your seatbelt. Is that just for children? No, everyone. Thank you, Buckle Bear. Thank you. We have Sheriff Jerry Droz here today. He has with him an actual meth lab, which was found by a child in our community. Sheriff Droz, can you tell us about it? What we have here is the remains of a meth lab. Uh, your pseudofedrin, your fedrin, your lithium batteries that's been peeled, salt. You have uh, ether from starter fluid. You have Drano from Drainer. Various items under the table there to carry anhydrous ammonia or anhydrous from the tanks. We got generators, and that blue bag down there was found by a nine-year-old child. He uh, was smart enough; they knew what he had and did turn it over to us right away. And I think he's a real hero for doing that. I agree with you. Are these the types of things that people should be on the alert for in our community? Yes. If you're seeing this stuff, please leave it alone. Call us or the police department they will go out and they will check it out and make sure what it is and they will then get it cleaned up for you whatever process it takes if we have to call in virus all in then we will do that and is it safe for people to uh, try to clean these things up themselves no it is not and like I say most of the time our deputies will go out and a lot of times they can clean it up if it's above our capabilities then they will call in virus all and clean it up that way. So these are dangerous chemicals that are used? The chemicals, yes, uh, especially when they get in combination with each other. Um, that makes them a lot more dangerous. It's a very frightening thing when we think about it that a nine-year-old child found this in our community. I am very grateful, as I think everyone else is, that this child did alert you. And it's okay to alert you any time of the day or night should you find these products. Any time, day or night, uh, our people will gladly go out. We'd rather go out and have nothing than have somebody get out there and get hurt. Because our deputies and police officers wear stuff that we know we're not going to hurt ourselves. Somebody picks some of this stuff up, it might have residue on it. If they got a cut in their hand or something, then they are got meth in their system. That's what we don't want. All right. And we you do have a problem in the county, as you can see here. Anything in the red is an actual meth lab, working lab. Anything in blue has been dump sites. So, and this is about six months old. So there is a problem. And in Jefferson County, in Iowa. In Jefferson County, Iowa, Fairfield, Iowa, there is a problem. And and you told us earlier these components were found in a bag, a common, harmless-looking gym bag. Is that correct? Part of them, yes. The rest of them have been picked up. These are actual stuff that has been picked up from a dump site or an actual working lab. 
thank you for being here and helping us to learn about how to keep safe. Well, anytime if they want a further demonstration or anything, get a hold of us and we will put on any kind of demonstration, show people what this is, and take it out any time. You would be willing to do a program for program, groups, children, program. adults alike? We've done it for churches, senior citizens, we've done it for Boy Scouts, we'll do it for anybody. We need the word out there so if nobody gets hurt with this stuff, we don't want anybody hurt. Thank you very much for your efforts and thanks for being here today. Thank you, Johnny. appreciate being here. Jefferson County Hospital has a large surgical department. Many kinds of surgeries are done here. We're highlighting two different kinds here today and we have some of the operating room staff with us, Vicki Arnold and Cheryl Royer. Vicki, can you tell us what you're displaying here? What we have here is the microscope that is used during cataract surgeries that our surgeons use. It helps them visualize the eye better so they can take out the cataract and put in the implant. Would you say this is a very strong microscope? Yes, very strong. Is it delicate? Yes, it is. And easily adjusted by the surgeons yes. to get the results they want? In fact, it is a state-of-the-art microscope, and we're very pleased to be able to offer this service to our community here. We're, we're very pleased to be able to allow people to have this type of surgery done very well and right here at home. Cheryl, could you tell us a little bit about the other demonstration that's going on in the hall? A display of our uh, total joint procedures that we do. Uh, we have the total knees and uh, hips, uh, some implants. Um, Total joint procedures are have been done here for a number of months now. I think that once again this service is an excellent service to have right at home so that families don't have to travel a great distance. Uh, the procedure can be done, physical therapy can be obtained, and people can walk out the doors of the hospital with a brand new joint and experience a much better quality of life. Do you too enjoy working with these types of surgeries? Yes, yes we do. I can attest to that. They're ACEs and they provide wonderful services in all areas of surgery for this hospital and for this community. Thank you. Jefferson County Hospital is sponsoring a Wheel of Health booth today with healthy questions for adults as well as children and lots of prizes too. We've landed on number three. What type of question would we have for our children today? Okay, number three would be, a picture of a part of the body is called what? And some of them know that and some of them don't, but that would be an x-ray. An x-ray, boy that's fun, look at yes. all the fun things here. We have Sherry Smith from our health information department who's sponsoring this booth to allow children a chance to interact with health care as well as get a prize. That's right. Are you having fun with it today? Oh yes, we're having and a good time. are having fun too? Yes, good. we've had quite a few of them come through good. today. And here's another one. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, she She'll have a question for you now. Okay. Do you know what a broken bone is called? It's called a fracture. <laughs> Fracture and get a cast put on, right? All right, you can get a prize. <laughs> can you tell us your name? Erica. Erica, and you're going to get a prize now for answering the question? Good. And you'd like to spin the Wheel of Hell? Sure. And what's your name? Allison. Allison. Excuse me. A busy booth today for both children and adults alike. What number will she stop at? Number one. Number one. Question number one. Do you know anybody that works here at the hospital? <laughs> yes, you do. I do. The man oh, you interviewed. Yes, I do. Who is that? Mr. Frank Gorski. All right. Good there job. There you go. Very you good. You get to have a prize today. Okay. Thank you. You want to turn, honey? Come on over. Today we have a number of free screenings that our community can employ to help learn more about their health. 
One is a diabetes screening. Jane Adrian, our diabetes education nurse, is here. Jane, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yes, today we are um, doing a lot of one-touch checks on patients and telling what a normal fasting blood sugar is, which would be like 60 to 120, and if they are not fasting, then it would be 60 to 200. Are there risk factors in the development of diabetes? Yes, you can get kidney problems, you can also have heart problems, eye problems, just all kind of different whole body system problems. And if you don't get it checked through the years, you'll have a lot more problems as your blood sugars stay high. So you need to, you know, keep careful track of what's going on with your sugars, especially if you are a diabetic. So this is something that people really should make an effort to find out about. Yes, definitely. A person needs to at least get checked once a year, I believe. And then if you are a diabetic, I think you should check it, you know, a couple times a day, fasting, and then maybe at 4 o'clock. Are there family tendencies to this disease? Yes, there are. A lot of patients have families that have had diabetes in the past and they are prone then to have it themselves. Are there symptoms that people can watch for in their lives that might indicate diabetes is happening? Yes, frequent urination. Also another one would be increased thirst, being very tired, and just having problems, you know, generally not feeling well. Thank you very much for helping us with this today. I think also that people can have their their blood pressure checked for free at this station and uh, learn more about those important numbers that are so necessary in keeping our hearts and our blood vessel systems healthy in all ways. As we travel down this hall, you'll be able to see air purification, nutritional supplements. Again, as I said, there are so many out there, but what tastes good and what doesn't. So let's take a walk. Thank you. As we move along this hallway, we, as you can see, a number of people are participating in the health fair today. A number of people are taking this opportunity to learn about diabetes and about healthy blood pressure numbers. You'll have to tell us a little bit about what you're doing sure, today. Sure, air purification. Okay. In fact, you should probably speak to my mother here. All right, very good. Could you tell us a little bit about your product? Yes, we have uh, we have an air purifier here that will get rid of all the mold in people's homes, and it's hospital tested and uh, for um, formaldehyde and gases that are commonly found, used in hospitals, and also streptococcus and staph. It will get rid of all of those kind of things. It's guaranteed for cigarette smoke and mold and all of these things. And that's a mold is a big issue in this part of the country. It certainly is. We know that we have many illnesses that are related to mold, so this is important information for people to have. It would be another way for them to promote a healthy environment. Yes, yes it is. And, and we invite anybody to um, get a hold of us who wants to know if they have mold in their homes. Thank you very much for being here today. As we move along, we have Marty Chandler with us with those nutritional supplements that we talked about. Marty, can you tell us a little bit about the role that nutritional supplements can play in a person's life? Yes. People who are, are uh, needing to gain weight, uh, possibly the elderly or maybe somebody on chemotherapy, might uh, need something that's high in calorie, uh, vitamins, minerals, and these things are the... Um, a lot of good products here that they could use. We've got Hell Shakes. Uh, these are without sugar. We've got um, peanut butter cookies. We've got chocolate pudding, custard, and we've got a fruit drink down there that we've kind of uh, made a slush out of it, and everybody really likes that. Also, we've got ice cream that every I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but everybody says it's really, really good. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And I understand you've had some of our faithful student nurses from Indian Hills yes. Community College yes. helping today. And I think right now you even have one of their instructors. Can you tell us a little bit about how the student nurses function for things like this? It's all part of um, service learning, going out into the community and doing different, different things for different organizations and facilities. And they're going to about four different booths today rotating through. So it's a real fun day for them. And it kind of gets them out of the community to do some good things for the people around us. Thank Thank you so much and thanks for being here. Have you found a nutritional supplement that you like? I haven't had a chance to try one yet. So. Okay. <laughs> Maybe later we'll find out about it. Ice cream. <laughs> As we move along, we have a booth presented by CETA. It's entitled Parents as Teachers and I think that they're helping us learn a number of ways that we as parents can interact to help our children learn. 
things are a little crowded as you can tell here at Jefferson County Hospital, but that's a good thing because people are able to get out and get the information they need. Can you tell us a little bit about the things you're demonstrating today? What we're demonstrating is we're demonstrating ways that parents can interact with their children. Um, we've gotten several activities from each age line um, to show the parents simple things that they can make in their home that might benefit their children's learning later. Now, some people think that they really don't need to do these things until children are a certain age. Is that correct? No. Children learn the most in their first three years of life than at any other time period in their whole life. So it's good to stimulate their child's learning while the parent is still pregnant, playing music, and continue stimulating your child's brain as early as you can. And how diverse should those stimulations be? Well, um, reading a book is, is good stimulation. Um, just about, the shared attention with a parent and a child. How about tactile or touching? Touching is very good. Very good okay. stimulation. All right. And sound? Sounds. Um, yeah. Talking to your child face to face so that they can later learn language by how your tongue, your facial expressions, those things. Very, very good. These all look like a lot of fun, and I wish I had time to try all of them. Do you have a favorite? My favorite is um, my, the pat mat, the Ziploc bag with water, adding a couple of objects into it, and um, touching the pat mat and watching the objects move. Good for visual stimulation, that's my favorite. Well, it feels nice too. Yeah, Thanks right. very much for being here today. As we move along, we have a display presented by CETA and The Nest. The Nest provides a very, very important service for this area, and we have Tammy with us today who can probably tell us all the things that they do. Um, the NEST program is actually a prenatal incentive education program. So by coming to class, um, today's health fair, for example, rather than having class yesterday, the girls came to the health fair today to get their points. And these are the so pregnant moms. These are our pregnant moms, moms who have delivered because children can stay in the program up until the age of three. So um, we have all of our families out here at the health fair today, and it's a first time for most of them. They're enjoying it. They've learned a lot of new things. They've stopped by the table and, and let me know what they've done. So it's it's a really good program. Um, over here are some of the items that they can purchase with their points. Um, they earn points for anything that is healthy um, for mom or baby before and after pregnancy. And this so. would include classes? Does it also include doctor visits? Classes, doctor's visits, dental appointments, um, well child, WIC, Anything that, um, you know, if they go to DHS and get those food stamps or medical aid, that's healthy for that family and child. We're going to give them points for doing that visit. So this is all on a point system? All on a point system, right. And then they can re use those points to retrieve products? Right. Diapers, correct? baby lotion, blankets, clothing, um, breast pumps, anything in that things. area. Right. All of those things. So this yeah. is very important to right. help give that very all right. important good start to make our sure new those baby. yes we make sure those um, prenatal appointments are kept and that and that they keep going that they see those doctors that and that's the the most important thing is getting those prenatal checks and, and doing those things before birth. Thanks so much for You're being welcome. here today and for providing this service to our community. Thank you. Go. As we move on. We have representation here from CETA for drug and alcohol prevention. There are many bits of information and some visual aids that can be utilized to actually learn more about the part that tobacco plays in the various disease processes that are going on and the problems with alcohol ingestion as well as drugs. So this is all important and very much fits together with our attempts to educate the people about what's out there in the community that can harm not only their children but them as well. Today Donna Smith, the social worker at Jefferson County Hospital, is available to help people learn about two different services here. Would you like to tell us about them, Donna? Sure. The first service that we have is telecare. It's a program where every day we make a call to people at home maybe that are alone or shut in, don't have a lot of contact or even possibly family around. It's a daily call between 8.30 and 9.30 every day. 
holidays and weekends included, and it's just a friendly hi, how are you doing, a check-in. Um, sometimes we might, if we run into a problem where someone's not home, then we'll call a neighbor or a friend that can come and check on them. It's, it's a little bit of an extension of Lifeline. Lifeline is there whenever they need it 24 hours a day, whereas we're just kind of a voice checking in daily. Sounds like a safety check, a good safety Real. check yes. for families. Yes, and the people that I have um, on our program right now really feel comfortable knowing that someone's checking on them every day. Well, I would think in so many instances in dealing with people, and it doesn't have to just be an elderly person. Right, right. It can be anybody that feels like they would like that support of someone calling and checking and making sure they're doing okay. Thank you. And now what else are you doing today? The other thing I'm doing today is I have information on advanced directives, which includes living wills and durable power of attorney for health care. Now, living will is a document that states if you're in a terminal condition, you don't want to be kept alive by artificial means. And it's a way of letting people know ahead of time, uh, before something happens, what your wishes are. Then the durable power of attorney for health care is where you designate someone to make health care decisions for you in the event that you can no longer make them for yourself. And it's just being sure that the people that you want making the decisions are the one making them. And that's so important in healthcare today, that when decisions need to be made, that you have the person who's exactly right for you making those decisions. But unless a document is elicited and properly notarized, allowing that to happen, you cannot be assured of that. So it's very, very important. Now, outside of the health fair, Donna, could people call you if they needed more information? Oh, certainly. For, for either program, either telecare or if you have questions about advanced directives, you can call the hospital. My name's Donna Smith. I'm the social worker here. And just ask the operator to page me, and I'll be glad to talk with you in person. Or if you want to make a time to come in and visit here at the hospital, we can certainly talk it over. I can answer questions, and then we can even get those documents taken care of. The one thing I do want to add for the people out there that already have a living will or a durable power of attorney, be sure that you bring a copy here to the hospital as well as any other health care facility you may go to and your doctor as well so that everyone um, necessary that would need to know that information has it. Thank you. Sounds like two very important functions here at Jefferson County Hospital. Now another thing that we'll be looking at is the child ID system. I spoke to you earlier about that and I'd like to show you how this is working. We have members of the police reserve here who are helping to provide this very essential mechanism for identifying your child should something unfortunate happen. So as you can see, this is a very busy and popular booth. Let's see what type of information that these people are taking. How tall are you? How tall you are? About 40 inches tall. Okay. Do you have any idea how much you weigh? No. 52? Yeah, 52. Okay. And let's see what color your eyes are. Brown. Okay. And your hair, we'll call it light brown, okay? Do you have any known medical problems? None? Okay, and what's your birthday? May 23rd. And you know which year you was born in? 1996. As you can see, very important information about a child is being gathered. Can you tell us a little bit about the project that you're working on? Okay, what we're doing is we're doing a uh, fingerprint and ID card for the parents. Uh, it has all the children's pertinent information and the parents' name and address and their thumbprints in case they're ever lost or kidnapped. We, we can uh, disseminate these throughout the county and the country and, and help find the lost child. I guess I can't tell you what an important thing I think this is for our community or how, how great it is that you're here giving your volunteer time to provide this service. Now, you say you attach a picture to these? If the parents have a picture, yes, we put it in there and we, then we laminate it with our machine and then the parents have this, put it in their, you know, secure area or in their purse or something. Okay. And how frequently should this be done? Uh, that, I'd say at least um, once every five years or so or as the, their information changes as far as, you know, height and everything. I mean, one inch I wouldn't change, but you know, if they grow like over the summer of six or seven inches, I would update it. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. 
Welcome to our physical therapy department. We have a very busy and active therapy department here at Jefferson County Hospital. The gang is out in force today to help people with a number of things, body composition, posture screening, blood pressures, heart rates, and oxygenation, and also to let people try some of the aids that we have for helping people with restorative therapies. Um, lots of fun to be had in this area. Many things going on today, and these people are always willing to answer any question that you might have and can be reached by calling Jefferson County Hospital. A light better, I bet you. We get over here with this. Well, we want to get your thing, too. We have the Students Against Drunk Driving here today with their faculty representative, Kurt Hansen. So how about if we turn the mic over to them to talk about what they're doing? Well, thank you. This is a group of, of high school students who are very interested in, in uh, promoting uh, the separation of drinking and driving. Uh, alcohol or beer is the, is the drug of choice among uh, uh, Iowa high school students, and, and these students are part of the solution to the problem rather than the problem. So they're, they're demonstrating uh, what it's like to uh, uh, walk on the line when you're drunk by putting on the drunk goggles. And these would represent a, a blood alcohol content of someplace around uh, 1.8 or, or nearly twice the legal limit. And I'll introduce uh, uh, Jenny here and, and she can uh, make a few comments here. Uh, basically what we brought here today, we brought the car door for uh, students to look at um, and try to open the uh, car door with drunk goggles. And we also have the line here, which I'm going to make Steven actually demonstrate. So this is Steven Steele and we're going to let him demonstrate what uh, it looks like to be drunk. As you can see, it's uh, obviously very bad so and difficult. So I'm going to turn it over to Carrie now. This is Carrie Peck, and uh, we'll let her tell her, yeah, what else we have back here. Um, we also have the golf and a remote control car to see how it is. It's similar to driving a regular car if Jenny wants to use the goggles. Makes it a lot more difficult to golf. Thank you very much, and it looks like you got a finger cast in the process too. Does it feel pretty good? Yes, it does. Well, good. Thanks for participating as well as being here to bring this valuable information to our community. So there are a number of other things here today. Uh, we have Diana Drish here with us with Shackley products to demonstrate for us some healthy alternatives as well as air fil filtration systems. Diana, can you tell us a little bit about th your products? Sure. Most people don't even know much about vitamins. Um, I didn't know when I started. Basically, you ch when your body is lacking something, it tells you in some way that you're lacking. You have um, gas or rash or you start to have aches and pains. Well, you're lacking in some sort of multivitamin or mineral, so we just have these products out here to give those back to put them back into your system. Um, the difference of Shackley difference is what we really promote because there's such a big, a lot of companies out there, the ones you buy off the shelf, um, they don't really know, you don't know what's in them. You, can, you can't really call and ask. You can ask Shackley, they'll send you the information of what's in their products and it does get into your system and how long. So Shackley difference is what I promote. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We also have representation from Drugtown here with their vial of life. Vial of life is a very important thing to have as a means of, of putting all of your medical information in one area. Deb, would you like to tell us about it? You use the formants provided in the, in the vial. It, you put all pertinent information um, related to who you are, your insurance information, who to notify in case of an emergency, also any medical problems you might have, medications you are taking, or med you know allergies. Mm -hmm. You put it in the top of your refrigerator. It's in the same place for everybody. EMS and everything knows where it is. Mm -hmm. Or you can put it in your glove box or your car. 
sounds like a really good idea because uh, speaking from a hospital standpoint, having that information readily available is of optimum need at a time when maybe yes. a person can't tell us those Definitely. important pieces of information. We get a lot of phone calls from the emergency room saying, we have so-and-so, what are they what taking? What are they taking? Absolutely. So very good to have this, and I hope people are uh, using this service oh, and getting it. it's been a great it. success. I've had a lot of people here today, and I have a lot of people that come into the store. Good. Thank you so much for being here with us. Hi there. Curves for Women is another option that we have in town these days for being fit and healthy. So many times exercise is not something that people enjoy doing, but we now have a service that allows some options that can be fun and that can be uh, very sociable for women as well. Curves for Women is located very close to downtown and here we have a special person to tell us a little bit about it. Hi, um, I'm Sue, Sue Bell, the owner of Curves, and what we have is a 30-minute weight loss fitness center, and it's great for every fitness level. We have ladies that come in that are 80 years old, and we have girls that come in that are 16, so we every fitness and age level in between. That's perfect, and I hear every day from somebody that they're going to Curves, so we're glad to have that available right here in town. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Diana Hutchinson is our speech and language pathologist here at the hospital. She deals with a number of different processes and she'll tell us a little bit about them. I work with people who have swallowing problems, usually from a head injury or a stroke or some type of neurological problem. I do speech therapy and cognitive rehab and usually that is also from someone who has uh, neurological problems. I see some children, mostly adults, and I go to the nursing home and I work here in the hospital and see patients who are in the hospital and see outpatients. And um, pretty much in a nutshell, I do all kinds of things. I work with radiology and doing swallowing studies to evaluate how someone is having trouble swallowing and um, help people learn to talk and think. If a, go ahead. If a person just had a concern, could they feel free to call you just to talk to you about it? Oh, absolutely. Anyone can call and get information. If they want to know if they have a problem, if they want to know if their children have a problem, a grandchild. <laughs> you deal with people of all ages. All ages and all types of problems with it that result in communication problems or swallowing problems. Thank you very much, Diana. Hope you're you have a good day here. We're glad you're with us. Thank you. At the hospital today, our local 4-H groups are providing face painting to anybody who wants to come along, young or old. Are you having a good time today? Yeah. What's the most unusual thing you've had to paint? Well, I've only, been, I've only painted one face so okay. far. Okay, and what was it? It was a fish. A fish. Were you good at it? Yeah. Well, that's good. How about you? Are you having a good time today? Definitely. And what have you painted? A rainbow so far. I just rainbow. got here. You so. just got here. Well, yep. things should pick up then for you, I hope. think so. We're really pleased to have all of you with us today, pleased to have representation. We feel 4-H is very, very important. It's an important alternative for kids to be involved in, so we're glad you're here. Thank you. Good. Very, very good. Okay. Just, just keep talking. Losing weight is not an easy thing. There are lots of lots of plans and possibilities for people. Not one plan works for everybody, but one plan that works for a lot of people is the Weight Watcher plan. And today we have representatives from the Weight Watcher program who are here to give important information to people and let everybody know how this can work with simple foods that you can get right at home. Um, right in the local grocery stores very easily and very affordably. Park and Recreation is here today demonstrating a number of the things that they use and their, their uh, various projects and plans. Keeping kids active so that they can learn life of action is such an important thing. 
We have Christy Gilpin on hand showing all sorts of things and telling about the various programs. If you haven't noticed, our area park and rec has a lot of programs available in the summer for kids as well as for adults. The Amazon company is here today. They are an herbal company. They deal in all sorts of things. There are a number of products displayed, lots of information here, as well as samples of a variety of herbal teas. So, would you like to tell us a little bit about it, Jeff? This is the Shipibo treasure tea, and it comes from the Amazon shaman rainforest. And it, it's not, there's no tea actually in the tea. It's actually a, a mixture of six different herbs, Jato Ba, Una de Gato, Pau de Arco, Chanca Piedro, Tutuwasi, and Stevia. And Stevia is 200 times sweeter than sugar. However, it, it helps to balance the blood and, um, and helps in a lot of different ways that uh, sugar would be harmful. And it's very away. tasty. Yes. Yes, it is. And that we're giving away free samples to people here, and, and we'll follow up with you to see how, how your experience is with the, with the products. Uh, you know, we're hearing a lot more today about the importance of having tea in our diets. Do you have any comment about that? Well, I think it's important to have uh, tea that has um, uh, the information from the plants. The herbs uh, have the information that they pass on to human beings. Uh, through their, their intelligence of the plants, and, and, and that's what you get from these type of uh, herbs. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, massage therapy is uh, the next booth that we have, and people are availing themselves of this by being able to sit down and get a massage. The Iowa State Patrol here is available with information that they have about all of their programs and projects as well. Yvonne Olin Salen is with us. We we have representatives from Sunnybrook telling us about the new project that they have going in our community. As we move on out into the hallway, we have people here with a wonderful, wonderful quilt from the Iowa Donor Network, as we talked about before, telling about different people who have been active in both donating as well as receiving. So could you tell us a little bit about what's happening with this? Sure. Each square represents somebody who gave that gift of organ tissue or eye donation for transplant. And currently we have six quilts in honor and to appreciate those people who have, who have made that gift. Um, the families have designed the squares of how they want their loved one to be remembered. And then they work with our quilters and together we quilt all the different squares together. So we, we're very proud of them. Well, I can certainly see that, and it looks like a great deal of thought has gone into these. It's, it's another way of having a, a gift that goes on for these people. There's nothing like the donation of life or the donation of sight or any type of body function that can be obtained by someone who is without it by the gift of a person who no longer needs that. And it's a way for families to be able to know that they have given a gift that has absolutely limitless value to another person, another family group, to, and oftentimes a whole community. So very, very important. If you haven't thought about it, please think about it. If you haven't signed up, please give it careful consideration because it is a gift that goes on giving forever. We also have the Hy-Vee Food Store with us, demonstrating and showing their, their organic line of products available to our community. This was something new that I certainly hadn't heard of. We have Marie with us giving samples of a variety of products that people can get right here locally in our own food store. Moving on, we have Crossroads Home Care and Hospice. Jefferson County, Iowa has had a very active hospice group for many, many years. One important thing that they've done for us is totally outfit a special room into a suite at, here at Jefferson County Hospital for people who need hospice care. Eulayla Conger is here. Eulayla, can you tell us a little bit about this? Uh, what are you wanting to know? About the hospice room here at Jefferson oh, County Hospital. There was three of us on the committee, uh, Jane Boosh, Jackie Pope Joy, and I, and we worked uh, 
oh, a couple, three weeks getting things arranged, and then we had a lot of things donated to us in the room. But we bought all this with our memorial money. We thought that'd be a good way to show how we appreciated what people did. And when you work on these projects, do you feel that they really do benefit the people right here at home? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I know from our standpoint, the hospice room has been so important to so many families in a special time of need. Do you get feedback from these families? Yes, we do. They call or they come and give donations or thank yous, cards. So this is a special touch that can make a very difficult time of life a little more tolerable and a little more comfortable. And we thank you for all you're doing with that. Lifeline is a project by which people can help stay in their homes longer than they might if they didn't have the, bon the benefit and the bonus of having help just a button push away. Charlotte Peck is our Lifeline coordinator, and she's here today to help people learn about how Lifeline works. Charlotte, can you tell us a little bit about how many people utilize this service in our area? We have 260 people that are members or subscribers to our Lifeline at the present time. And does this have to be just a project for the elderly? No, no. We have someone that's uh, just 23 years old that was in an accident and needs to have this type of system. So it's for all ages. And it's a very valuable, valuable service, again, that allows people to stay in their own homes. And can you tell us just briefly how it works? Okay, they wear a personal response button, and when they need help, they push this button, and through this machine, it sends in a call to our emergency room here at the hospital, and um, the person on call in the hospital will find out what's going on with that person. Um, sometimes somebody uh, falls and just needs help getting up, or sometimes things are a little more serious, and, and they feel like they're having a heart attack or something, and so the ambulance can be sent to help these people. That's, that's great. It's a wonderful service and it's a very affordable service, but it's also a place where people can, if they would like to help impact another person, uh, donate funds as well to help with su supplementing those who maybe can't afford it as easily as others. Is that correct? Yes, it is. We have an assistance fund set up that, um, where we do help. We have about 12 people that we're helping right now with this. and. Uh, I don't want to say, but uh, it's it's wonderful, and um, people are so giving and so caring, and uh, it really makes it possible for people to live in their own homes and feel safe and secure, and know that they can get help when they need it. Thank you very much, Charlotte. We have a crowd gathering here at Jefferson County Hospital as the Libertyville Fire Group are planning to use their Jaws of Life unit to actually dismantle a car and show people what happens when an accident has occurred and parts need to be removed in order to help a victim be removed. We have Chris Morton with us. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, what we're gonna, as far as what we're going to do today, we're going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate how we take the doors off the vehicles. Um, we're also going to do what we call a dash roll after we take the top off the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and cut the top off. And then we're going to show how we do a dash roll in case uh, uh, the dashboard has rolled down on top of somebody's legs and they're trapped that way. I believe we're also going to try to remove the driver's side seat and just show just what can be done to a car and, and uh, what kind of scary things can happen in a situation like that. Is this a very dangerous thing for people trying to help? Um, yeah, uh, even for us doing this, there's always some range of, of uh, danger uh, I was just explaining a little bit ago about uh, seat belt pretensioners on vehicles. Um, with today's newer vehicles, the airbags, um, all the, the side curtains and the side impact airbags, a lot of things you have to worry about. Do you have to have special education to learn to do this? Basically most of all of our education comes in uh, uh, form of information through the Iowa State uh, Fire Marshal's office and some of the car manufacturers to let us know the different things that they've changed on the vehicles and what to watch for. Well, thank you very much for being here and doing this today, and we'll let you get going with it. It's our pleasure. Okay, most normally, what we would do is start out on the other side. 
As these gentlemen prepare to do this, uh, you see we have a number of children who are interested. Dorian, can you tell us what you'd like to see today? Don't know for sure, huh? Okay. Well, we hope you'll do lots of things while you're here at the hospital. I see little bits of plaster on your hand, so I think you already got a cast. Let's see, and this is Bethany, I think, mm -hmm. you're here today, yeah. too. Yeah. What have you done at the health fair today? Well, I've gotten a lot of stuff. You have? A whole bag full there? Mm -hmm. Good enough. And is this uh, Rachel that we have today? Yep. Okay, Rachel, can you tell us what you've been doing at the health fair? Well, I went to see my dad. Got a balloon, got my finger cast. And your dad is the manager of the laboratory at the hospital, isn't he? Yes. And your dad is a doctor here at the uh -huh. hospital, isn't he? And here's Big Brother, and they're getting so tall, I don't know who's who. I'm Kyle. You're Kyle. Kyle, what have you been doing at the health fair today? I'm um, just mostly walking around, getting all kinds of neat stuff. Good. What's the best thing you've done so far? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. There's still lots of stuff to do. All right. And how about you? Can you tell us your name? Diana. Okay. And what brought you to the health fair today? My mom. Can Your mom? Were you glad to come? <laughs> yeah. Good. What have you done that's fun? Went to the gift shop. Good. And did you hurt your finger? Yeah, I got a broken finger. <laughs> you got a broken finger. Did we do that and fix it for you? Yeah. Okay. And Shannon? I'll bet you're here to find out a little bit more about what your dad does, because he's Dr. Cochran, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, did you just arrive at the health fair today? Yeah. Okay, so you haven't had a chance to do anything? No. And you have your brother Duncan along. What are you hoping to do today, Duncan? Mm, something fun. Something fun. Well, you'll want to be sure to get to Wheel of Health, and you'll want to be sure and touch the real lungs, but wash your hands when you're done and look into the eyeball back in surgery and try all the free goodies around the hospital from ice cream to Especially who knows what ice. the ice cream was good great we're really glad to um, have all of you here yes i i really did break my finger before down at arizona you did for real and did they fix it for you there yeah but i didn't have a cast i had a um, a splint yeah i'll bet well get a cast today It'll be nice to compare the two, but don't really break your finger, all right? I know. Okay, thanks for coming to the health fair. Well, as this continues, I think we'll move on into the hospital and look at some of the other things going on.
I have with me now Jay Choi. Jay is a medical student from the University of Iowa. We're very proud here at Jefferson County Hospital to be able to work with our local physicians in providing alternatives in learning for the University of Iowa students and Jay is here on a rotation. Jay, can you tell us a little bit about your experience here at Jefferson County Hospital? Sure. Um, I've been working the last couple of weeks with Dr. Larson at uh, Fairfield Clinic and it's been quite a different experience working here compared to um, University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. It's here, was, I guess it's the main emphasis that I found over here is um, the community setting, a care of a community and a family care, I guess. Um, I've seen a um, case where uh, Dr. Arston was working with a, a five generation of, um, of people. Yes. And it's been quite a wonderful experience knowing people, whole family in a way, in community. That's and, right. And uh, today here, I, I guess, working as going through this um, fair here, it's been quite interesting. I, I was, it's quite surprising that this hospital is able to provide this kind of a big, I and mean, really, this is, um, I guess, huge variety of um, um, factors in community health um, to provide. I guess I'm not quite saying. No, that's yeah. that's fine. Yeah. It provides so many options yeah. for people to learn about right. things in a non-illness setting, so right. that they can yeah. just come out today on this beautiful sunny day and mm -hmm. learn about all kinds of things. And you are right; it's very diverse. Lots of opportunities to be had, yeah. and we're glad that you're with us too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So finally, as we're winding around through this big health fair at Jefferson County Hospital today, we'd like to end, as we started, with some emphasis on the Jefferson County Hospital Foundation. I'm going to turn this over to the foundation members who are manning their booth at this time and let them tell you a little bit about the foundation and about what they do. I'm John Stever of the foundation, and we're here today at the hospital fair. Basically, just promoting the promoting the hospital and and its services, the community. Um, we do a lot of promotions throughout the year and raise money uh, for different things. One of the things that we've done just recently are the defibrillators. Recently, we've been responsible for helping get them into the police cars here in town and also the sheriff's department. Uh, we've donated defibrillators to MSAE Fairfield School District and also the Packwood Schools. Um, very worthy cause, obviously. I think we've we've made a bulk purchase of um, probably about 15 of these, and we've got them dispersed throughout the county. Other things we've done: um, supplied crutches and wheelchairs uh, for the community. Well, a lot of really good things. And our our job basically is to raise awareness of the hospital and the services that we provide here to the local community. We're selling scrubs this year to raise money. Um, we do a lot of different things. Yes. Hi, I'm Lori Woody. I'm the newest member of the foundation and probably the longest term member on the hospital board. And um, John, I wasn't listening to what you were saying, so what do I need to talk about? I'm about the defibrillator and, and the fact that we're promoting the hospital and the services here in the community and talking about different promotional activities we do, selling the scrubs and so forth. Okay. That's where I handed it over. Well, thank you. <laughs> I didn't give you much notice. I'm no, sorry, that's all right. Well, I think it's a real, um, uh, I think it's a board that does a lot of good, and I think that um, the money's really going out to the community well. And um, I just think that it's uh, just part of this, being part of this fair, this health fair has been a really good thing, and I've seen a lot of people go through here today. I'd say it's a real, it's a real worthy cause uh, for anyone doing estate planning, and and it's a, it's a great organization to think of when it comes to gifting at the end of the year for tax purposes. Uh, we're 501c3, and any donations are, are deductible. 
Um, really good thing to talk to your CPA or attorney about when you're doing estate planning. Um, obviously, we, we've uh, gotten money in the past through bequests and, and different people's estates, and those gifts are always welcome, and that's how a foundation like this um, survives long term.